If there is something to be said about James Rolfe's legacy on the internet, it can be said simply through this. Even now, 16 years after he uploaded his first Angry Video Game Nerd episode to YouTube, and 18 after he recorded said episode, he is still a recognizable personality on the space and his followers remain as vocal and committed as they have ever been. And that's a good thing, especially since the last couple of years have been rather hard on Rolfe's online career. Despite his association with video games, James has admitted on repeated occasions that they are not his main area of interest. After all, while we were happily playing Dr. Mario, he was busy creating things like Jimmy Rolf vs. the Punching Bag, Snakes, and, if you are a Zoomer, Cinemassacre 200. This was sooner or later going to become an issue, especially since his core series hinges on him at least pretending to care about video games, and the problem will only become more obvious the longer he performs the character, unless he makes an effort to keep it relevant. Fortunately, James and the people over at Screenwave Media have realized this as well, since they have spent the past couple of years trying to bring focus to non-AVG and related content on the channel. A reasonable idea. Keeps the golden goose around, but gives James the freedom to do things that don't involve wearing a pocket protector or feigning an interest in Sonic the Hedgehog. Unfortunately, the results of these efforts have been... mixed. The Cinemassacre podcast hit a strange note from literally the first line... <sighs> Wow. And lasted less than some amateur Tumblr blogs. Meanwhile, Rex Viper, James's band, did a live performance which seems to have sated everyone's need for remixes of 80s pop with NES game soundtracks. James's independent efforts, such as Rocky Climb the Mountain, seem to be much better at making a mockery of him than they do anything else. Kids asking him, like, are, are you scared? You know, if a big giant, you know, wanted to fight me, I'd be scared. Um... Yeah. <laughs> Take all of this and combine it with plagiarism accusations, special effects failures which are neither as charming nor as forgivable now as they were on a 70-year-old B-movie, calling out fans who may disagree with the way the channel is being run. Do these people not want me to have any help? Do they want me to suffer and do everything myself? and you can see why I think the best thing he's done this entire decade was a video where he fixes a drawer. However, that's just changed, because after about a decade of hearing about it and how it took him 20 years to write it, his autobiography, A Movie Making Nerd, has released and immediately became one of the best-selling books on Amazon. Amazing when initial reports of the book claimed that the formatting was an absolute mess. This is before we get to the fact that after 20 years of development and lord knows how many eyeballs on the product before release, the book still begins with a typo. The reactions on the internet seem to be as moderate and well thought out as they always are. Either this is the best book ever conceived and a deep look at the most wholesome YouTuber ever, or a pathetic spectacle from someone who got lucky that YouTube got big and would otherwise be working on a Walmart somewhere bitter as hell that nobody recognizes his talent as demonstrated on his extensive filmography. Let me tell you, kid, you could go... The the belly. Oh, the belly. please, listen up, kid, oh. listen up. If there's one thing oh. you could do for an old man, I'm old. You're not an old man. Shut up, you! But if we take a few steps back, consider all that I just said. The man responsible for this... Don't you know about the nerd? Everybody knows that the nerd is the word. And this... Now let's talk about the lights. What is this? Some kind of anti-gravity experiment? And this... I want to be sedated with the Game Boy! Bam, 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 I want to be sedated with the Game Boy! And who decided to call his teenage journal an autobiography, and then decided he was going to publish it, actually did. And it briefly became the best-selling book on Amazon. With a typo on the very first page. At that point, the content of the book doesn't really matter. There's no more insight to be gained from it that you could just gain watching James Rolfe be James Rolfe, certainly not from the writing, which mirrors the unique cadence James uses on his non-AVGN work and combines it with a sentence structure which could lead one to think that he was attempting to meet a minimum sentence count. AVGN fans will also be disappointed about the relatively meager amount of information about its development, though the movie does get its own section, but what you are getting instead is a portrait of a man who has been rolling 18 on 3 dice for the past 20 years. Someone who has achieved success beyond his wildest dreams due to a set of circumstances allowing him and his friends to produce something unprecedented, on the exact moment where it could become as big as it did, taking him from mere amateur filmmaker 
all the way to an opening of his movie on one of the most historic movie theaters in Los Angeles, and if the book is anything to go by, none of it changing the way he perceives the world nor how he interacts with it. A movie-making nerd, which I can honestly say was both entertaining and has given me unprecedented insight on Rolf as a person, is a book which is both surprising on its content and yet exactly what you would expect from the moment you glance at the cover. I've committed to reviewing the AVGN movie when I hit 250,000 subscribers, mostly because that's not happening and I really don't want to see that movie again, but much like this book demonstrates, even if I manage the most insightful and entertaining look at it, James will neither notice nor care. His legacy, personally and professionally, is already cemented.